Hiya, hey, uh, this is CJ, or as I'm known on the forum, Jerome. Uh, the reason for this weird, most haunted fuzziness is not that I wish to remain anonymous or that I'm trying to hide from you all. It's actually just the fact that <laughs> I'm sitting in a basement with the lights aren't working and using a really crap webcam, okay? So, <clears throat> hopefully, ooh, it looks um, just about possible, but the important thing is that you can hear me, hopefully. Okay. There was a post this morning about ghosts, that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, my microphone's not great and I really hate talking to camera, but I think it's going to be a lot quicker for me to quickly describe my feelings on the matter than to try and explain it um, in text, as I'm not very well at the moment. So, throughout history people have seen ghosts. People have seen ghosts since at least the classical age, I believe it's Herodotus, um, I'm sorry about my pronunciations, mentions an account of a ghost that clanked its chains. And, you know, throughout history, right through to the Victorian times, the woo clank, 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 clanking ghost has been a staple of uh, well, popular fiction, popular culture, and indeed, supposedly authentic accounts. My friend Dave actually once suggested that the reason that ghosts clanked the chains in the Victorian era was down to the... Uh, arrival of indoor plumbing and the WC, the toilet. He said perhaps, you know, when auntie went to the loo and suddenly everybody heard the sound of groaning, and splashing and clanking of the chain and the clumping of the cistern, people asked, what is it? And they were told, it's the ghost. Jokes aside, um, in fact, one of the most famous ghosts, uh, the Cheltenham ghost, uh, was, according to Peter Underwood, actually a mistress who was being passed off as an apparition. Now, there are problems with that account, there are problems with that explanation for it. It's called the Morton case. You can find it in Proceedings 8 of the Society for Psychical Research from 1888. Um, I'll talk about the Cheltenham ghost another time, but for the moment I'm just going to talk briefly about why I believe in ghosts, why I believe people see ghosts, and more importantly, what a ghost might actually be. When we hear ghost, or the word ghost, and people ask you, do you believe in ghosts? I think pretty much everybody immediately decides that uh, you mean the spirits of a dead guy or a dead girl. Uh, because that's what ghosts are to most people, you know. I see dead people. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. The important thing is that people have the experience. And I say that without a shadow of a doubt. I myself had a particularly strange experience in 1987 on Fet uh, Fetford Priory in Norfolk. Um, it forms the basis of an episode of Ghost Hunters, not the American one, with the plumbers. They'd be pretty well su sorted to suit out your WC, wouldn't they? But the uh, old English uh, series with William Woolard, which sometimes shows on Discovery Science. That experience actually led me to question what had previously been a very materialist, uh, in fact a totally materialist worldview on my part. I was a very, very hard materialist, actually. And... Uh, I started to look for explanations, but the one conclusion I didn't immediately jump to was, this is a dead guy. So, if a ghost isn't a dead guy, well, what is it? Well, this is a problem for all of us. We probably all know somebody who reports having had a weird experience of this type. And in 1894... Mrs. Sidgwick from the Society for Psychical Research, the SPR, that's www.spr.ac.uk, if anyone wants to look up the society. Mrs. Sidgwick led a panel of authors who published a report on what they called the Census of Hallucinations. Now, the Census of Hallucinations had been instituted by an international psychological conference. It was mainly administered by the SPR. And it was an early piece of what I would call qualitative research. It was, in fact, in many ways, actually grounded theory, for those who are familiar with that term. But what they did was they interviewed, using census takers, collectors, they were called, 17,000 people. And uh, after many amendments and corrections, the census question, which I'll post later on the forum, one in ten, roughly, uh, I think it was 9.9% .9 of people, said that they had had an experience of hearing a voice when there was no obvious person, you know, speaking to them, of being touched, or of seeing an apparition, or seeing 
something that wasn't there, a hallucination if you like. I mean, the problem is that the term hallucination nowadays is often associated with illness and you can have hallucinations which are clearly linked to ill health or to mental illness and you can have hallucinations which appear to occur in what the SPR referred to as the sane or the healthy and it was the latter which interested the SPR. Now my girlfriend's currently doing some work on this Beck and uh, it's a fascinating subject and I think the most important thing that's come out of that for me is we've been collecting reports of people's experiences using or she's been collecting them and I've been looking at them with her from time to time just to you know maintain um, some idea in, a, in an early trial study that I ran uh, her actual PhD is confidential so I don't get to look at the data on that but my trial study which was conducted using Facebook I collected 60 accounts in the end of experiences and I have no reason to doubt that people are probably telling me the truth and I think the old skeptical thing where it's all made up is hogwash actually I think people do have unusual experiences I'm sure that they are confabulated that they grow in the telling um, though one of the interesting things about my own experience at Fetford and indeed other experiences from people I know very well indeed is that over the years they don't grow in the telling in fact they become less and less the, the story is boiled down to a series of narrative points perhaps because we become bored with telling it but actually mainly because you forget about it that was one of the things that came out of the SPR census actually they discovered that there were far 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 more people reporting apparitions that had happened recently than there were people who had seen apparitions 10 years ago. So either the period leading up to 1894 saw a tremendous number of apparitions which suddenly appeared, you know, like the bit in Ghostbusters when the city's under threat and the, um, I've forgotten the name of the character, but he releases the grid, the containment grid, and the spooks start to surge throughout the city and they get unprecedented level, levels of PKE. <laughs> well, it could have been that that was happening in 1894, or it could be, and I think this is far more likely, that people forget people actually forget what they've experienced. Um, experiences which appear to challenge your basic worldview about how reality works I think are pretty quickly forgotten and many of these to be honest 99% of the hallucinatory experiences that I have heard from friends and family um, are so trivial I heard a voice call my name, I looked around, there was no one there. I mean, we've all probably had that experience many times, but if you were asked a census question, have you ever heard a voice without, you might not think to actually include it. So, you know, unless it's a life-changing or a major event. Okay, so I said that this had taught me something, the census from 1894, and what it's taught me is actually part of my critique of modern ghost hunting groups. Um, I'll start with that, I think, actually, because although I'm, I know I'm rambling on, I think this is quite interesting. Ghost hunters are very fond of going to haunted houses and investigating and you pay your money or you go along with a group and you sit in one of the stately homes of England. Do you know the Noel Coward song? The stately homes of England, though rather in the lurch, provide ample opportunity for psychical research. Anyway, <laughs> you go to one of these stately homes or not so stately homes and you pay your 30 quid or whatever and you spend the night in the building and if you haven't done it you can come and do it with my group, we do it occasionally, it's fun. And it's a bit like legend tripping. You're there for a good time. You're there to see something and you strain every nerve you know to experience something. In fact, my group, I'm sorry, I mean, it's really negative, but we've done 16 investigations and as far as I know, no one's ever seen anything. Or not that I can recall. I mean, this is part of the thing. It might have happened, I might have forgotten, but I can't remember writing up anything at all about something positive actually coming out of <laughs> it. doesn't mean we don't have a good time, though, and it doesn't mean it's not fun. And that, I think, is important. Um, I did have an experience once on an event like that. It was we were making a most haunted show, and myself, David Wells, and Phil Wyman were backstage in the 